Hey YouTube, it's Dimitri, and today we're going to talk about career paths and statistics. Um, this is really for people that are getting a statistics degree, but we're also going to talk about other degrees and how you can end up in statistics. Um, and just a quick intro to me, if you don't know who I am, um, I go by Fancy Quant on YouTube. Uh, I work in the quantitative finance space. I am essentially a statistician at a bank. Uh, my career path is a bit different than most. I have a finance undergrad and a master's in applied economics uh, with emphasis in financial engineering applications and econometrics. So kind of tied in, but not really a little bit of a rare path to get here. But anyways, let's just dive on in and talk about statistics and statistics careers. Okay, so to start off with here, let's talk about the degree areas. So obviously the most common degree, probably the easiest degree to get into statistical careers is going to be statistics. So getting a statistics degree is gonna be probably your best bet. Um, there are other options I'm gonna list here below. Uh, econometrics and biostatistics, again, I consider somewhat just like statistics. Um, econometrics is not necessarily the same as economics. Econometrics is going to be statistics applied to economics. Uh, biostatistics is going to be essentially biology and like medical applications of statistics. It's quite big in the industry as well. Um, and we'll see here in career wise, some of these might be more beneficial than others. But again, a general statistics degree will take you a long way. Um, there are other categories. So yes, data science degrees cover statistics somewhat. Um, good data science degrees will cover a lot of statistics. So picking your program is crucial here. Um, again, though, a data scientist can go on to become a statistician in many of these different areas. Um, mathematics is another common degree. Again, you're going to have to take statistics courses. You have to study statistics specifically. You can't just be a mathematics student, take a bunch of math, and think you're going to be a statistician. But again, mathematics is another common area to either dual major in um, or even just take it and then get a minor or something else in statistics to kind of help you focus on statistics. Um, <laughs> I've said statistics a lot here, but anyways, um, actuary is another area kind of field that's on the fringes. We'll talk a little bit about that. Um, but when you get a statistics degree, you can go on to actually be an actuary, but typically you need to go on and get an actuarial master's to do this or a PhD. Um, it's another area, but something to think about. And then finally, there's business analytics. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the job roles here in a second, but business analytics is kind of statistics and kind of not statistics. Um, we'll talk about that here in a sec though. But anyways, let's talk about the degree types. So you can have an undergraduate degree, a master's, or a PhD, and I'm going to link a bunch of articles below so you can kind of look online and see some of the sources I look at, um, which also tie into my actual experience here but master's degrees are the most common. The reason for this is that with a master's degree, you have a lot of flexibility. Um, you have enough experience that you can do more technical jobs. Uh, you can also do more simple introductory jobs, but it gives you a good flexible kind of medium between balancing how much time you want to spend in school um, and you know how much money it's going to cost. So master's are pretty expensive, but they're much shorter than a PhD, for example. Many of these jobs though you can do with an undergraduate degree, but again, it's gonna close some doors by not having a graduate degree of either a master's or PhD. Um, with an undergraduate degree though, you can work in analytics and you can do a lot of statistics in general. And what I mean by this is there's going to be different levels of jobs and roles. Um, a lot of times you're an introductory statistician, they'll call you a statistical analyst, for example, and you're gonna do simple tasks and you're gonna kind of get going but as you build a career and you get more experience, you can start moving up to like what they call an applied statistician or in like finance and banking and some other areas. Uh, you could be like an associate statistician. Um, but again, moving on to more advanced areas of stats a lot of times comes with experience. So an undergrad degree is a good area to kind of get in, um, maybe do some base level analytics, some statistics, maybe start building a career from the ground up. Um, a master's degree though is gonna be able to do all of what an undergrad can do um, but you're just going to have a higher level uh, and there are some fields that will require a master's at minimum. Uh, again, quantitative finance, the area I've worked in requires this. Um, again, it depends on the size of the firm. So larger firms like to have more credentials, smaller firms are a little bit more flexible. Different industries, again, might require a master's and some won't. When you're applying for jobs or you're interested in a very specific field, which we'll talk about at the end of the video, um, do your research, look through each and every one, try to find companies you want to work for, find the job applications like open positions, 
and then see what they require. If it says a minimum of a master's, that's gonna be what you want. And then finally, a PhD, this is gonna be the highest level here. So of course they can do everything an undergrad and a master's can do. Um, a master's degree, which I didn't mention, can also teach like at community colleges, for example, um, and perhaps somewhat of like a visiting professor if you have an expertise in some area and a university wants to hire you. But realistically, if you want to do an academic route, you want to do research and training uh, at very rigorous levels, you're going to need a PhD. So a lot of people end up going for the PhD if they want to work in academics. And again, looking at those jobs online, trying to pan out what you want to do, what industry you want to end up in, and what degree is going to be required is a lot of time, effort, I know. I wish I could tell you everything on here, um, but it changes across time and different companies have different rules. So it really depends and you really do need to do your own research on what you want to do. All right, so now to look at the plethora of different areas you can end up with. So statistics is needed almost everywhere. Any industry, it can be used but this is just gonna be a snapshot of what you can do with a statistics degree. It is very open. Um, I wish I would have known this because I probably would have got a statistics undergrad if I would have known all the cool things you can do with it. Um, let's just start off with here on the far right on the orange. Yes, you can work in data science. Um, you're gonna probably wanna take more data science classes in undergrad. Uh, what I mentioned also is actuarial sciences. So yes, actuarial sciences, is an area you can end up in. But again, you will need to take actuarial science courses. Um, usually you would get like an undergraduate in something like statistics. Um, some schools have actuarial undergrads, but a lot just require statistics or math. And then you can go on and get a master's in actuarial sciences. And then you can go on to become an actuary and then take the exams and do all that. Uh, back to data science though real quick. Yes, you're gonna need to take classes in data science in undergrad, which I mentioned. But also if you're gonna get a master's degree, take classes in that. So if you really wanna be a data scientist, a good route for this is to get an undergraduate degree in statistics a lot of times. So you get a lot of rigor and like math and stats theory. And then to actually get a master's in data science, it kind of helps round you out to get a fuller perspective. All right, so all the different career paths here, let's just run through some of them. So these are just some examples. Uh, marketing is huge. If you wanna work at Google or Facebook, for example, there are entire teams that do statistics or analytical methods um, in marketing and their products at the tech firms. So some of this falls outside of marketing. It's like how the business is ran. But also you can work in tech, you can work in manufacturing, uh, you can work in retail, and yes, you can work in the food industry. So a lot of these companies need people to build models, uh, data science, artificial intelligence methods, but also just a lot of traditional statistic models on predicting supply and demand, um, trying to figure out you know, different systems on how do we optimize our supply chain, for example, things like that. So again, marketing is a big area. Engineering is its own area. I don't know a ton about engineering, um, but yes, software engineering firms that build software that needs statistical analysis, a lot of times hire um, statistical people. And so to do this, you might want a statistics degree and a computer science degree. You can dual major, or again, you might opt to take one as an undergrad one as a master's. But again, if you do that, you need to make sure in the master's, you also take enough of both courses at a mastering level to really do this successfully. Um, again, you can start off with computer science and then do stats as a master as well, but try to get enough skills across both your undergrad and your graduate study in both fields. Again, manufacturing, look at life expectancy of products, for example. Um, yes, there's a lot of statistics behind this. They hire statisticians uh, in the engineering field. So in manufacturing, there's one example of this. Um, biostatistics, again, is huge. It's its own area. You can get biostatistics degrees. Um, but again, you might work in pharmacology, epidemiology, right? Anything in the medical field, for the most part, is going to require research and statistics. And a lot of these different jobs hire statisticians uh, to help do that. Um, now, consulting is kind of a catch-all. So consulting, you could be consulting for all these different firms we've talked about. You could be consulting for finance, banking, government, right? Consulting is kind of a catch-all, but just keep in the back of your mind, that is an option if you find consulting interesting. And then there's government, of course. You can do local and federal. And again, these will go into different areas as well, like sciences and policy. And they do a lot of analytics, even on the political side of like campaigns, for example. And so having a statistics background, you can work in government if you really want to. Um, science is another huge area. So this is by no means a coverall, just a few examples here. Uh, forestry, ecology, psychology, kinesiology. Again, for a lot of these, you're going to need another degree to go with it. 
So I would encourage you perhaps to get an undergraduate degree in one of these or dual major in some of these different things. So maybe get like a, I don't know, a master's in forestry and then a, or a master's in statistics and then get a PhD in forestry. So you can really focus on your main area, which is forestry. But again, having statistics and having a master's in that opens a lot of doors and a lot of other opportunities, kind of like a backup plan, but it also allows you to specialize in different sciences. Um, so again, statistics is huge in almost any and all sciences and research. And then finally, business here. So it will help you with general things like finance. It'll help you build models for operational research. So it's like decision-making within businesses, um, economics and econometrics, as I mentioned before. So again, companies like Moody's forecast and predict um, the economy. Again, the government predicts the economy. So you can work in economics on the government side and in consulting, as I mentioned. Um, that's a huge area. And then finally, to wrap this up, Quantitative finance is what I do for a living, so I'll briefly talk about this. Um, there is a minimum requirement for quantitative finance of a master's. So master's and PhD, PhD is preferred. There are quite a few masters in the industry as well though. But again, you're building statistical models for banks and investing firms. So what you're gonna be doing is predicting, for example, credit losses. So banks make loans. Uh, we wanna predict who we should make loans to. This includes everything from pricing these loans to who you should you know, originate the loan to, um, to operational research inside of finance. So you know, how do we collect different assets? Um, like for example, if you repossess a car, who should you repossess first, second, third? How do you provide models to provide strategy to the operational research teams? Again, there's a lot of it in here. And of course, you can do all the fun trading exercises, portfolio optimization, uh, and risk management of the investing side as well. So anyways, I hope you guys got a fuller view here. Again, I'm gonna put more articles in the description below so you can get a broader perspective here. But in general, I love statistics degrees. You can do a lot with them. And I think um, as a student, I never really realized all the different areas and industries that you can work in. And it's kind of shocking to find out that like, wow, I didn't know you could work in retail or manufacturing or food or software engineering or tech firms or finance and banking, right? There's all these things you can do with a stats degree. But anyways, thanks for watching. If you want more content like this, uh, let me know in the comments below. If you guys wanna learn more about quantitative finance and you have a statistics background or you're working on a statistics degree of some sorts, um, subscribe to this channel for more content like this. So anyways, until next time.